the top of the test tube is boiling. So there's a very interesting phenomenon over here. The Bunsen burner is hitting um, the water on top and the water is actually boiling. But on the other side, at the bottom of the test tube, okay, where there's this metal wire gauze and ice below, um, we see that um, it remains as a solid ice. And in between okay, the boiling water and the solid ice, we can see this a column of uh, water which is in liquid form and okay this thing is asking you okay for the uh, reason okay so the options given here are ice is a poor conductor of heat b water is a poor conductor of heat c convection current cannot be created in water d the gas prevents energy from reaching the ice okay so let's do uh, get the answer by elimination method first Option D is not possible because the gauze cannot prevent energy from reaching the ice. It can reduce, okay, uh, but it cannot prevent. Okay, so this is wrong. For option C, convection current cannot be created in the water. This is wrong. Okay, because convection current can be created. Okay, it's created on somewhere on top. Okay, and uh, the current is from here okay and some conversion current can occur here all right so for part a ice is a poor conductor of heat okay this one we do not know okay but the best answer over here is actually b water is a poor conductor of heat why because uh, for water to for the heat to get transferred to the ice it has to pass through this column of liquid okay and since we know that okay that the ice remains as solid while on top okay is already boiling we know that we can deduce that water is actually a poor conductor of heat uh, uh, it actually conducts the heat very slowly okay from the top to the bottom for question number nine in the process of convection energy is transferred because of density differences in a liquid this one you have to remember okay for convection current is always linked to density differences okay uh, the rest of the options okay are wrong and for question number 10 during melting molecules are absorbing the latent heat of fusion okay this one you have not learned so uh, you don't have to attempt this question question 11 a solid substance at room temperature is placed inside a beaker a thermocouple is used to measure its temperature the beaker and its content are then heated steadily the graph below shows the temperature of the substance during the experiment. Right, so um, let's underline some of the keywords. Solid substance at room temperature. So we know that it starts off at room temperature. And then a thermocouple. Thermocouple is an uh, instrument used to measure temperature. Right, used to measure temperature. Just like your mercury thermometer, your temperature sensor. Okay, so thermocouple is actually an instrument used to measure the temperature. The beaker and its content are then heated steadily. Okay, so let's underline these keywords. Okay, so over here we know that heated steadily, so this has to be a heating curve. And over here, okay, there are a few regions U, V, V, W, W, X, X, Y, and Y, Z. Between which two points on the graph does the beaker contain a mixture of solid and liquid? Alright, so um, okay, uh, solid and liquid, we know that uh, this process is called melting. Because before melting, okay, the object will be solid. After melting, it will be fully in liquid. And during melting, okay, it should be uh, uh, having a mixture of solid and liquid. Alright, so the answer is actually WX. Okay, do not uh, write uh, the answer uh, UW. Okay, because UW over here, this region here, the object is still at room temperature. Okay, so if the room temperature is at 10 degrees Celsius, um, okay, it would remain at 10 degrees Celsius until it gets heated up. So this is the part where it got melted. WX. And this is the part where vaporization or uh, the boiling point has occurred. Alright, so um, option C is uh, the answer. And now let's continue on. 
Okay, the rise in temperature of substance causes the internal energy to increase. This is due to the increase in kinetic energy of the molecules. Alright, how do you do this question? Rise in temperature is often linked to the increase in kinetic energy. Okay, so I say again, rise in temperature is proportional. Okay, I'm using a mathematical symbol, rise in Ke. Alright, the diagram below shows a wave on the C. So which points represent half a wavelength apart? Alright, so the um, question is half a wavelength apart. Okay, half a wavelength apart. And how do we know which one is a half a wavelength apart? So the first thing that we have to do is to find the full wavelength. So how do we find the full wavelength? One method is between two trout. Okay, so this is one wavelength. Okay, another method is of course uh, to uh, make it sort of method whereby uh, two halves of the uh, wave mix up of uh, one wavelength. So let's trace. Okay, so let's start from Q. So it starts here, moves up here, and then it moves down and come up again. Okay, so this is half a wave, while this is half a wave. Okay. So half a wavelength can be represented by Q and S, okay, but in the options there are no Q and S. So the next answer will be S and T. So the answer will be S and T. This is half a wavelength. Alright? So this is half a wavelength. And let's continue on. Question number 14. The diagram below shows a cross section of a water wave. Which distance is the amplitude of the wave? Okay, this one should be easy enough. Amplitude is always from the maximum displacement to the initial position. Okay, so option C is the amplitude. Question 15. A surfboard moves at a speed of 5 meters per second on the crest of a wave. The distance between successive wave crests is 10 meters. Alright, so there are quite a bit of information and let's try to underline the key words. So the speed, the distance between successive wave crests is 10 and they are asking you for the frequency. Alright, so we have speed, we have uh, these successive wave crests at 10 meters and frequency. So obviously, okay, the formula to use will be V equals to F times lambda. Okay, so we have the speed is 5 and we are supposed to find the frequency. So how about the wavelength? Where do we get the value for the wavelength? Okay, so the wavelength over here is 10 meters. Alright, how do we know it's 10 meters? Because this is the distance between successive crests. Okay, the distance between two crests is actually the wavelength. Okay, that's a definition. Uh, please refer to the definition in the textbook if you are still unclear. So in between two crests, uh, the distance would be the wavelength. Successive means one after another. Alright, so uh, the frequency is actually 5 over 10, which is equal to 0 0.5. And the unit for frequency is Hertz, and the option is A. And, okay, let's move on. What is the property of all electromagnetic waves? Waves, okay. Uh, this one, you might not learn it. Okay, so you might not have learned it. Uh, question 16, I'm going to skip it. Question 17, skip. Alright. Um, question 18, uh, okay, uh, skip. Okay, 19 and 20, okay, you don't have to do it. Alright. So, this is the answer, okay, for your paper 1. 